Hey, how's it going everyone? It's your boy Wax here. And after more than a month away from the game, we're stepping back in for another murder investigation. And maybe some other trouble as well. I do want to make it clear right from the start that despite being posted on Monday, this video doesn't contain any content related to the brand new anticipated Cheats and Liars update. Unfortunately, I don't get any type of early content access, so I'll be playing the update today, hopefully along with most of you I'm assuming, and I'll make sure to get some videos on that coming your way in the next few days or so. But for now, we're in a new city called Callister, named and recommended to me by GunnerJackal97, and if you want to comment a name or a previous city seed down below, I just might try it out in a future video. Here's the seed if you find the map interesting and want to try it out for yourself, and with all that said, let me tell you about a recent case I had. I had been working in Callister for a few days already, doing various side jobs. I managed to save up just enough to purchase a lowly ragged apartment at the end of town, with a neon sign that annoyingly blinks 24-7. After another long, brutal night of lousy side jobs, I came home thirsty, bruised, cold, hungry, and smelly, which forced me to make my first official purchase, a shower. I bought a few more essentials like a fridge, a bed, and a cheap TV with a stool. Say what you want, but the place was starting to come together. Actually, to be fair, it kind of reminded me of those empty house memes. Unfortunately, I had exhausted all my current funds, so this was what we were stuck with. For now, anyways. In the morning, I grabbed a hot dog for breakfast, put the leftovers in the fridge, and duped it out with some cockroaches in the apartment. But I mean, let's be real, I know I wasn't doing any real damage. I've seen Wally. -E. When I was done, I headed out into the city to take on what I thought would be today's official job. But little did I know at the time, I was far wrong. I picked up an arrest case, as they're my favorite to try and track down. All we had was a fingerprint, a blood type, and an apartment building. Not an apartment number, let me remind you. Just the building. As I marked down where I was supposed to head next, a beautiful toaster caught my eye. I didn't have a toaster at home, and I was too broke to afford one right now. So I took it. I mean, why not? Who was gonna stop me? Let's be honest, the real likely scenario is the manager just ends up hiring me to track down who stole it. So I took it home and set it up on top of my TV, since I didn't currently have any countertops. After that, I was officially on my way to Doyle House Apartments. I wasn't sure how I was going to handle this job, but I'm the kind of guy who takes things hands-on. In either way, I was dedicated to finding this person. As soon as I walked into the lobby, though, I knew what I was doing first. I started blasting. Bam. One by one, mailbox to mailbox, I scanned probably about 30 of them before I just said screw it and decided to go and start scanning doors instead. Now here's where I made probably the dumbest choice I've ever made in my entire career of investigating. I decided to start all the way at the top, the 15th floor. Now normally this wouldn't have been a problem if I found the fingerprint on the 14th floor, or the 13th, or, or even the 10th. You want to know what floor I finally found our match print? Do you? The first. The first floor. I scanned 15 total floors worth of prints. Despite my mind being drained, I broke into the apartment and started going through everything I could to figure out who our print belonged to. There were two people living here, an Ariana McCarthy and a Courtney Middlebrooks, and unfortunately both their prints were everywhere. I also thought I might be able to at least narrow them down by blood type, thanks to the birth certificate, but they both shared the same blood type too, of course. I took note of where each one worked and then headed out, but not without stealing their fan first. It was about lunchtime, so I took a few more bites of my hot dog before setting off to the chubby albatross where Courtney worked. When I got inside, I bought a bourbon in an attempt to blend in, not because I was a raging alcoholic. Thankfully, I found a passcode behind the bar and let myself into the manager's room to go through the employee files. There it was, Courtney Middlebrook, and there was our print. There was only one thing left to do. Well, two, actually. First, take home this stool I just grabbed from the bar. And second, head back to Courtney's apartment and arrest them when they got home. Unfortunately, in the process, I accidentally tossed my new fan out the kitchen window. When 
I was finally back at the Doyle House Apartments, but while I was waiting for Courtney to get back from their work shift, this happened. I couldn't sit there and wait anymore. Courtney was the least of my worries. After days of waiting, there was finally a known murderer in the city, and it was up to me to take care of it. Thankfully on the way out, I ran into Courtney in the lobby and threw them into cuffs right then and there. I had an active crime scene to be at, so I left them there for all their neighbors to see and make fun of. The crime scene was actually in the Orchid Ward, which is inside City Hall. If there was a perfect way to say the enforcers are absolutely garbage at their job, this was it. Someone was literally murdered inside the enforcer's building and got away. The body was on the second floor, and enforcers were already doing their best trying to make themselves look busy before eventually pacing out and refusing to do any further work. The surveillance was tight in the building, so I had no choice but to cut the power to the cameras. When I walked in for the first time, I immediately noticed this 8mm cartridge on the floor. And thanks to the wallet I found on the body, I found out our victim was Anvi Sharma. They worked here as a medical officer, and were shot between 1.15 and 2.30. They also had a revolver on them. Was it possible they might have been aware of the violent fate that soon awaited them? Along with the bullets in the body, I also found a toy car next to all of it. Unfortunately, this was the tell of a serial killer with essentially no motive. I worried it was going to be difficult to track them down. From the toy car, I was able to get our first print. Type DW. That same print was plastered all around the office. In the manager's office, I reviewed every employee file, with none of them matching our suspect's prints. I tried accessing the crunchers, but each one was logged in under Tom Jansen, the chief medical officer. The whole scene was pretty bizarre to me, so much that I kept walking around and found Tom Jansen's locker completely wide open, empty, and the tipping point our DW prints on the key code. Anvi's belongings were messed up too. Was it possible Tom Jansen was also murdered somewhere else? There was also blood and a ton of bullet casings all over the floor in the complete opposite room of where Anvi was. I had a lot of information to go on, but the last thing I did before I left was check out the security footage since there were cameras all over the office and medical wards. There were a lot of people on the footage, and truth be told, I couldn't tell who was acting suspicious and who was just there working, so I pinned a bunch of possible witnesses and suspects before leaving to begin the official investigation. Which really meant it was time for another lunch. I unloaded all my gear onto the table, ordered a donut and a coffee, and then reviewed the evidence we had so far. We had a body, an empty cartridge, and a toy with a fingerprint. There was also Tom Jansen, who in my opinion was MIA. I had a bad feeling about finding them, since it seemed like they were a target as well. I threw back my donut and coffee and then set out for Tom's apartment. What I didn't expect, however, was Tom to not only answer the door in his tidy whities but to be completely cooperative in the investigation. They answered all my questions, invited me in, offered their fingerprint, and gave me some extra spending money. I was already suspicious of them for being so overly helpful, but then I walked into the living room and found this. Willing to overlook it, I then made my way to the kitchen. Look, I know Tom Jansen wasn't Anvi's killer thanks to the print we had but I wouldn't be willing to bet they hadn't killed before. And even if they haven't, I might end up being their first victim because Tom caught me stealing money from their partner and ended up chasing me out of the apartment. At this point, it was about time I resorted back to my usual tactics. I returned to the crime scene to hopefully find more out about our witnesses, and just my luck, I ended up finding one of them. They were able to give me some important information, like the fact that our suspect was tall, and they were in here at about 2 a.m. I was confident enough to go through and unpin all of my suspects who weren't tall, which ultimately brought me down to two final citizens. Enforcers had finally taped off the scene, but I needed to run through everything one more time. I powered off the cameras once again and tried to see if there was anything I missed the first time. 
and then I found something that actually kind of creeped me out. On two different cameras, one of our suspects stands eerily in the center of each room. In one of them was Marco Cornett, one of the medical workers that I remember seeing in the lobby. I went down and I asked Marco about the suspect I was investigating, and they confirmed every suspicion I had. I was ready to call it. This was our killer. The only problem was I had no idea who they were, where they lived, nothing. The one thing I did have, though, was a photo. And I went around showing everything. I plastered their name around the city, and if no one knew who they were before, then they definitely did now. From every person I talked to, I was getting closer and closer to tracking them down. Each time I was given a new street and a new time, eventually leading me to the Sane Smoke apartment building. Before I headed there though, I needed to eat, drink, shower, and most importantly steal more furniture from the local businesses, because obviously I hadn't been doing that enough. My apartment was really coming together. It was the perfect place if you were hosting a viewing party and just needed a bunch of random seating. And apparently someone came by and fixed my window, so I no longer have to see that pesty neon sign. See, it was all part of my plan after all. I had more of my hot dog and coffee before showering and then heading over to St. Smoke to finally arrest the murderer we've been chasing the whole time. I asked nearby neighbors and tenants in the building until I got a name, Regina Durant. I immediately hurried to the apartment security room and broke in so I could look through the resident files. About halfway in, there they were. 902 Sane Smoke. They had a key hidden under their doormat, so I was able to sneak in quite easily. There they were, standing in the kitchen not even five feet away. I retreated to the bedroom to see if I could find the murder weapon by any chance, but then... Finally, I knocked Regina out and was able to catch my breath for the moment. I realized I didn't have any cuffs on me and was also on the brink of death, so I made the decision to leave the scene and come back better prepared. Except, that didn't happen. I healed up, lost some cuffs, but when I returned to finalize the arrest, Regina was gone, and the only thing left were the remnants of the bottles of wine I flung. I was worried Regina was already setting out to murder someone else. Maybe even Tom. Maybe anyone. Once I got back onto the streets, I asked everyone who they might have walked by. From Tiger Boulevard to Lovelace Boulevard to Pay Street, which finally brought me to Fontenot View. Regina could have been anywhere at this point, but I had to trust the directions I was given. And most importantly, my gut. Eight floors up, I found her. Whether she was heading to work or on her way to murder another unsuspecting victim, what difference did it make to me? I threw her in cuffs right where she stood and found the ammunition plus the silenced pistol she used to kill Aunt B. I had everything I needed to prove my case, so I filled out all the paperwork and turned it in to officially solve our case. But that wasn't the end yet. I took a trip back to Regina's house and since they wouldn't be needing it anymore, drank all their alcohol, trashed their house, and stole their piano seat. But I mean, can you even call it stealing if it's from a murderer? I don't think so. There was now yet another seat in my living room, so if you want to come over with all your friends, I mean, let's just say you won't be standing. Thanks to the new paycheck, I was also able to finally buy some counters so I didn't have to keep storing everything in the fridge. Although I can't say it's not convenient. It was the end of the job, it was the end of the night. I had managed to not only bring another murderer to justice, but also fill my apartment with random crap from all over the city. I'd say it was a good one. This is Detective Wags. Until next time.
Hey everyone, thank you once again for tuning into the videos. I can't even begin to express enough how much the support means to me. I never once would have guessed how much this series and this game would have grown my channel. Just thank you, all of you, every single one of you that tune in. I might only know you through a number or even just a name on a screen, but just know that every one of you, you're making a difference in my life. And I can only hope to continue growing the channel and posting videos for you all. As always, if you enjoyed the content, liking, commenting, and subscribing helps me out immensely. Let me know down below if you're playing the content update, how you like it, how you feel about it. Like I said, I'll do my best to have something out on that soon. Thank you all once again for watching and staying this far. I'll see you all on the next one.